it's really a responsibility as an actor to say to yourself, okay, what do I have to do to make this movie work? What's needed and wanted for this movie to work? Figure it out and do it. I find that directors can say nothing and be incredibly helpful. And I find that they can say a lot and be incredibly helpful. Where is this person from? Where is this person raised? What would a person like that want raised there? Being in an Altman movie is sort of like being in a big party. Nashville is having a party and you're in it, you know. Which way does the fridge open? How are you getting this object out and doing it swiftly enough that you can say your line at that point rather than over there because you took so long with your prop? You have to practice props all the time. With many characters, especially in a drama, find out what they need. Not what they say they need, not what they want. What they really need. I have to say, I think that scripts choose me. Um, I'm helpless. When I read your script, Russell Brown's script, Bluetooth Virgin. You know, I wasn't going to do the movie. My agent said, well, they're not paying you enough. You can't do that movie. I said, oh, I don't care. And so, um, and then after like uh, some weeks went by, you, Russell, emailed me. And you said, um, I'm sorry I didn't like my movie. I said, well, I never read it. I never got it. You didn't e and finally you, you brought it to me, hard, hard copy. And I loved it. I'm not talking about the part now. I'm sorry, I'm talking about the movie. I guess that's how I choose a part is the movie because I know I can just play about everything except on stage I can't. But on movies, in movies I can do almost everything. So I, it's more important the movie and the movie was witty and um, carried you along and it was just remarkable, I loved it. The part was very interesting. A, a person with an overview, a person had a lot of understanding a lot of perception beyond the um, capability of the person with whom she was speaking. She knew more about what was going on inside of him than he, he did. Um, but she didn't have him lose his dignity at all. So um, I thought she was wonderful. I loved the way she talked on and on. I loved the way that she referred to philosophers. And, um, and I loved the part. But essentially, it was the movie. It's the writing. It's the sensibility of the author. It's the, it's the sentience of the author. It's, it has to do with that, and it has to do, I read books, I never stop reading. And I'm involved with the narration. I love the narrator. Um, I love William Gold, Goldman. I mean, I have a crush on him. Uh, I love James Agee, I have a crush on him. <laughs> um, I like Martha Grimes, I like Charles Dickens. I really love the, 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 the I love listening to somebody think and talk in my mind's eye. I adore that. And I have to like the person. I mean, I can read one paragraph and throw the book away. I do it all the time. Throw away a book every week. Because the narrator isn't somebody that I admire. Isn't somebody that I think is elegant and, and great. I'm reading a lot of Joris Simenon right now. He's amazing. You are there. You're in the place. It's And, and it's, it's done with such elegance and style. He doesn't use very many metaphors. He doesn't, he only uses colors, and a lot of sound and smell. And um, he, he's known as one of the best um, authors of the 20th century, and that's why. Because his narrative voice is like, you can't resist it, you know. And, and as well, Linda Candell, when she get, sent me mascara, I just read it and I rolled over on the floor in a kind of sodden heap. Um, so often the director is the writer. You know that I I like him right away because he wrote it, and also he's decided to do this insane thing, which is to be a director, he's taking his life in his hands. <laughs> it's not something people should do. I mean, a director has to be responsible for every single aspect. <laughs> you know, it's, who can do that? Who can be that? I've tried to direct. I direct one day and the next day I sleep. I can't. I can't. It's the, the window. Did it? Was it dark? Did it look like night out? 
was the light, was the camera, was the place, was the, I, I mean, I can't understand being a director. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes choosing movies, and that has to do with needing money. It has to do with losing my career. In the 70s somewhere, I lost it. And it has to do with uh, friends. They'll, they'll, you love them, and, and so you want to work with them. So I've had bad choices. And then, of course, when you're in the Hollywood um, uh, arena, well, you know, it's easy to know what movie to do. You just do the movie that Hitchcock is directing. Okay, so Universal offers me two pictures. What is a Hitchcock picture? I'm going to say yes. I desperately wanted to play the other part in Family Plot that Barbara Harris had. I just loved that part. But somehow the word never got through my people and through his people to him that that's what I was interested in. And then quite late in the shoot, I admitted it to him. I said, you know, I really wanted to play the kind of coy, sexy, lying, um, clairvoyant, quote unquote. And he said, oh no much too lowbrow for you to do. I would, Have you seen Five Easy Pieces, Mr. Hitchcock? Anyhow, that, and then, you know, Airport comes along. Airport was a movie that I liked a lot. I bit my nails off. I was very moved by it. I thought it was a very exciting movie. And that's, I think, I think it's easier to make decisions like that when you're in that arena. First of all, an, an unwarning sign is warmth of heart. Um, one of the movies I did three years ago did very well. It had theatrical release. I met Jack Perez. He was warm-hearted. And I knew I wanted to do the movie because I, I liked him right away. Sometimes you meet someone and you feel they'll always be my friend. And they're usually right, you know. And I like that. That, that makes me do a movie. Warning signs are... Um, when someone is going over, let's say, a rehearsal with you, and they start to direct you very um, physiologically. I think that's the word. You can help me if it isn't. Can you squint your eyes here? You're angry. You want me to squint my eyes because I'm angry? Yes, you have to look angry. Squint your eyes. Or he'll say... Or what was it? Can you talk much more slowly and walk much more slowly? Maybe a little deeper voice. You want me to, hello, how are you today? All right, I. That particular director also started adding words like sucking cock and so forth. And I said, I'm not doing this movie because I'm in for a horrible time. And he said, oh, well, I'm going to sue you. I said, no, I'm going to sag and show them what, what the script is now and what the script was when you hired me. And all these little sucking and dicking and all these dirty words. And it was 10 minutes I was out of there. <laughs> I can't stand it. When a person says you're, meaning you're a nice person, and they spell it Y-O-U-R. Or sometimes, rather than where, they'll go W-H-E-R-E, they'll go W-E-R-E. Because, okay, it is over. It's like over. I can't work with Actually, what will happen is people will ask me to, to they'll want to interview me. This happened a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I am writing a book. Yeah about some famous person, Jack, maybe, you know. And I'd like to interview you. Well, I don't know, maybe. Uh, I can't do it this week. I don't feel so well. Oh, I'm sorry, you're sick. Why? Oh, you are. He's writing a book. I never emailed him back. There are scripts where the in, at the bottom of the first page, somebody gets killed. It's out. You can't kill someone that fast. I mean, there must be good scripts where you do, but there are, I have had hundreds of scripts with the same story. Hundreds, same story. You have a group of people, 
they're men and they're women, and the women look beautiful, and they're not wearing a whole lot, and their breasts are big and, and stick out, and, and they get killed, and then the, then the next person gets killed, and they're either in a club, or they're at a cabin, or they're on a hunt, or they're um, in, um, they're just somewhere, they're, they're backpacking, and they get killed one at a time. And you can tell because the first page, the first backpacker gets it. You read the script over and over so that it, you kind of are it. I did a movie called Rhinoceros once. Rhinoceros is a very difficult movie because the style is very hyper. And I don't come with a hyper style. I don't talk like this, oh my God. I don't, I don't come with a hyper style. I just, like this sort of natural, I guess. And everyone else who came to the movie had a hyper, you know, zero mostel. They were stand-up comic types. And uh, I had no idea how to play this part. So I just read it over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. Finally, I found the one thing in the role that was persistent and funny which was this woman overdid it trying to help. How are you? Are you okay? Because I do have something better in the other day. Do you like different kinds of um, fish? You know, my fish is not good today, but I... And then finally I could do the part. I think you can do it fairly thinklessly. It might be a better idea. You just read it and read it and read it. And don't think about it. And it gets to you, kind of. Well, there are a lot of ways to, to prepare for a part, and I would say that, that every one of them is extremely valuable and worth knowing about. Um, one thing that comes to mind is, where is this person from? Where is this person raised? What would a person like that want raised there? What would they think is valuable raised there? If you're lucky enough to be shot on location, you have a, a lot of things that you are, are, are ready for you to learn right, right in front of you. For example, never try to get an accent from an accent person. It's general. It's going to be a generic accent. It's never going to be accurate, and it's never going to be something you can really wear mindlessly. All accents should be worn mindlessly. You can't. There's a lot of acting that you must prepare enough and rehearse enough and repeat enough that it becomes part of you. And you no longer think about it. Because when you see people on the street, you don't see any of them thinking, how are they, how am I saying this? How am I walking? How, how is my, they don't do that. You don't want to do that. You can't replicate life that way. You have to be completely unknowing of, of yourself. So how you get an accent is as follows. You find someone who, is from that place. And you can always find someone from that place. And once you find someone from that place, you take your script and you write above every word the hieroglyphics of how, you enun how you, that person from that section of our country enunciates. Like, um, I, I like it too. I'm like you, I like it too. T -E -U. T -T T U H E E O O. To you. To you. You have to say to you. I like it to you. And then you got it, you see. But that's nothing like normally we speak. And what you find after a while is that the vowels will be quite um, consistent. I will be I. Or what irritates me a lot is when people open their R's for, um, let's say, Arkansas. There are a lot of southern states, most southern states, you don't open your R. You don't say, I don't know. I don't, you don't say, well, I think it's a ray of jam. I think it's a, that's sort of eastern south. That's a ray of jam. But in Arkansas and all through that area, the panhandle, it's a ray of jam. A completely different enunciation. So that's one thing I think is very, very important.